Hi guys, welcome back and this is Craig from Mobile Tech Talk and today we are going to be looking at the Isla Silk which is an incredibly cheap 720p smartphone from China just to see if we can answer the question in 2018 is there such a thing as too cheap when it comes to smartphone technology? So let's take a look. So let's get into the box straight away. Um, you don't know whether you can see it on this particular camera, but it's a velvety sort of box. You can leave these nice little scuff marks on the top here. There you go. Um, very cheap, to be fair. Nice little magnet here, though. Let's just uh, get in there and see what we've got. So first things first, we've got an old lady on the front. Um, basically saying that she is a female embroiderer and thank you very much for allowing me to embroider your box and please visit Guizhou, Guizhou. Um, you're welcome and no, <laughs> thank you. So uh, this one says exactly the same actually, um, just in a slightly different format. Okay, put that to one side. Then we've got the device itself. So we've gone for the champagne gold colour but it's also available in black and in blue. Looks a little bit silver to me, but let's get it out of this package. Whoa, that's shiny. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, so it has got a bit of a goldy tinge to it with a white front. Um, okay, so we'll put that aside for a second. Let's see what else we get in here. See if I can do it without breaking anything, because these boxes are notoriously tight. Oh, I've already broken the, uh, the little bit of foam there. Uh, nothing else in there. Right, so a bit more cardboard that can go over there. We get a warranty card, which is interesting. Don't think we're ever going to use that. A user manual, uh, which is multi-language. Okay. We get a screen protector that looks incredibly yellow to me. Okay. And we get a... Oh. Um, okay, it's a TPU, well, it's a harder plastic actually, um, kind of case. It's actually, this feel, this uh, material on the back, like a cotton weave is actually quite nice, but this embroidery here is a little bit too garish for me. So we probably won't be using that. Here is the power brick. Now this phone runs a Snapdragon 430, which is Qualcomm Quick Charge 3 uh, capable. I'm not sure whether that's included though with this particular device. Oh, it's a UK plug, not something you see every day, especially on a, an international version. Put that out of the way. And we get, oh yes we do. It's coming back guys, the micro USB charging port is coming back. Who wants USB-C in 2018, right? Yeah, well, we do, but uh, let's stick all of this in here out of the way and let's have a look at the actual phone itself. So we're back and we're going to take a closer look at the Isla Silk um, and peel off some of this plastic to reveal the, I think, plastic underneath? Yeah, I think it is. So what are we actually working with here? Well, it doesn't actually say on the front, but it's a 5.7 inch 1440 by 720 HD display, so 720p, and it's a, an 18 by 9 aspect ratio. Um, it comes with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 430, which I said earlier, which is an 8-core device, but it's a couple of years old now, um, 2016 when the chip came out. It's uh, got dual, as you can see on the back here, dual 13 megapixel cameras with a f2.0 aperture. So that should should provide some okay shots. We'll, uh, we'll see if we can kind of show you on there. So you can see it's obviously got a flash on the back and a rear mounted fingerprint scanner, which we're not going to do any Joey Vigevi tint sort of scratching to see if it works, but it's nice to actually see one of these on an incredibly budget device. This is £150 currently from Amazon. It's got 4 gig of RAM, it's 64 gig, um, expandable up to 128 gig storage with a SIM card um, in the SIM card slot, uh, sorry, SD card in the SD card slot. Um, it also comes with the dual SIM, so you can actually put two nano SIM cards in here, which is good. Something that a lot of the Asian markets still do and I personally can't live without. We've got a volume rocker and uh, power buttons on the side here. Speaker grill at the bottom, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, micro USB. Shut up Cortana, no one's talking to you. 
micro USB charging port um, and a little pinhole microphone there. Up the top, absolutely nothing. SIM card tray, as I said. 16 megapixel front facing selfie camera with another screen protector, which we're gonna get off because we don't care about screen protectors. Um, and a chin and a forehead. Um, so not particularly bezel-less, but hey, guess what? No notch, which might be good for some people. The more I'm looking at this, the more I can see a slight champagne gold tinge, but it looks a little bit more sort of mirror silver to me. Anyway, let's power this on and see what it looks like. So as I said, this is um, it's an incredibly cheap device running a, a relatively old um, Snapdragon chip. It's a 430 chip. So it is an eight core chip, so it should be okay in day-to-day -day activities, but as soon as you start taxing that Adreno 505 GPU, which as I say is two years old, then you're probably not gonna be able to play any of the, wow, that was quick, uh, any of the latest games on Android. But there is also a 3000 milliamp hour battery in here, as well as Android Oreo on board. So for 150 pound, you're probably getting a device that may take decent social media level pictures, will enable you to use social media and browse the internet, with Google Play on board as well, um, and give you some decent, you know, some decent specifications in 20, 2018. Nothing great, but some decent specifications for a low price. So uh, we're just going to have a, a little bit of a delve into this. I'm going to connect it up to Wi-Fi and set it up, and then run through what the software experience is like uh, to round out the video. Hi guys, so we're back and we've just gone through the um, setup, putting my Wi-Fi password in, which obviously I'm not going to show you guys. But I did uh, skip doing any of the Google Play sign-up, which is included out of the box, which is nice. Um, we're just going to skip that, but we are going to try the fingerprint scanner. Um, and let's just see what that looks like. Do a simple pattern. You so say there's a fingerprint scanner, so let's see how quickly. Uh, well, that seems to be doing a good job, actually. I'm having to press down on the fingerprint scanner a little bit more than I would do normally. And obviously turning it off doesn't help. Let's try and do that without turning it off. Don't know whether you can hear it vibrating, but I'm having to lift it off, wait a second and put it back on. So not the fastest fingerprint sensor in the world, but hey, the fact that it's got one, I'm not gonna to complain too much, Let's get rid of all of this because we're not doing anything with Google at the moment. We just want to get in and see what that software is like, right? Don't actually know what the software that runs on this is. Accelerated location? Nah, don't think so. Let love return. Oh, that's quite nice. Um, okay, I wasn't expecting this. I was expecting something much, much heavier. Let's just have a look at what are the wallpapers we've got here. Got anything nice? That'd be a no. Okay, let's go and check out the settings. See what we're actually running. So it's Android 8.1, which is not what I thought it was. I thought it was 8.0, but that's nice. Um, security patch is March, so maybe there is an update here. Let's see if we can uh, we can have a look. Checking for some updates. And the one thing I will tell you about this immediately is it's plastic all over and it's very, very, very light. Um, it's saying that I'm up to date, which isn't great. Check, checking for a full update. And my device's software is up to date. Okay. So this actually doesn't look too bad. Let's have a quick look at the camera. Uh, oh, we see some call outs there. Quite a quick shutter speed there. Um, let's just try and take a half decent shot and see what it comes up like on this device. Let's see if we can whack up this brightness. So, actually, wow, actually not too bad at all. I mean, I know this is under some lights and it's a still image and all the rest of it, but uh, yeah. Um, Let's just jump around a couple of things, see if we can get it to trip itself up before we close this out. So the whole point of this is, is there 
too, such thing as too cheap in 2018 when it comes to smartphones. Um, I coming into this, I would have absolutely said 100% yes. And I would have said the £200 mark um, for a brand new phone probably would have been it. This is a little bit, uh, a little bit south of that. So I think with the four gig of RAM, it's probably gonna handle the multitasking quite well. Uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna handle other applications in terms of things like, well, Chrome OS. Uh, Chrome OS, Google Chrome. Let's uh, not sign in. Let's just go and have a look at our lovely website. Oh, there's the Isla website. Available from AliExpress, also available from Amazon. Use our affiliate link and give us some cash. Oh, where am I going? We don't want to go there. And obviously I can't spell on this. I always get an L instead of a K every single time I try to do this. So it's uh, it's not too slow in loading. Yeah, it's okay. Um, I'm really quite surprised with what you get for £150 now. Uh, I remember when I bought the Motorola E and um, that was kind of abysmal. Uh, it should have been called the Motorola A then, I suppose. But um, yeah, the Isla Silk. Uh, 4 gig, 64 gig Snapdragon 430 with 3000 milliamp hours of battery, which is one thing I'm definitely going to check out because if this is low power consumption chip, 3000 milliamp hours on a 720p display should annihilate it. So uh, yeah, we'll be giving this a bit of a rundown and I'll let you know my full thoughts about whether this is too cheap in 2018 in the link to the article down below. We'll update that when we've completed it. But uh, apart from the fact that it looks a little bit cheap, feels a little bit cheap, in terms of the experience I'm getting in the software at the moment, not too bad at all. Let's just quickly check. Whoa, that's not bad, ready, go. Okay, it's pretty immediate. So that's not bad at all. I've, I've seen worse on flagships when they've been released. So you're probably not gonna get some customer care and some um, uh, many over the air updates. I wouldn't expect Android Pie on this anytime soon. But uh, that's not really who they're aiming at. They're aiming at this at somebody wants a relatively disposable smartphone or maybe somebody just getting into the smartphone, maybe somebody from the older generation getting into this. £150 for this. Everything seems to be in English. Um, they do have some support numbers in English as well. So who knows? We'll uh, give this a full run through and please keep it locked in Mobile Tech Talk. And thanks for watching this video. We'll be back soon.